Hello and welcome to Tea Time on Plus TV Africa, where the biggest stories of entertainment live. I am Ife Omai and I have my co-anchor to do this with me, Nimi Adekombi. Hey. How's it going? Beautiful. You too. I like the natural hair <laughs> and everything. Thank you. Yes, girl. <laughs> okay, so should we go straight into the topic? Of course. Definitely. All right. Okay, so we have veteran Nigerian singer Sasha P, who was taken to Twitter to ask people's opinion on a crucial issue in the Nigerian music industry. The rapper turned fashion designer tweeted, music in Nigeria is not a lucrative business. Discuss. And we are going to do just that, but we're not going to do that alone. Joining us... Okay, so we don't have the guests right now, but we would, I think we have a official that doing this on our own. So should we discuss, what do you think on Sasha P's um, statement? Yeah, um, I think she's coming from a place of... Um, she's not currently doing music at the moment. Right. So the way music is being done might be different from how it was done in her days. In these days, when we see artists, they come with the bling bling, the fashion, the everything. But when you compare that to the way artists wear in the olden days, they were not really fashion icons. They yeah. were not really all, all um, they were not really up in our faces with the wealth. Yeah. They were focusing more on their craft. When you think of Two Face, when you think of um, there's this artist I'm trying to remember, but I can't remember for the life of me. She's a rapper. I can't Eva, remember. Eva. No, no even not Eva. Eva. She sang one very boppy song like this, but she just fell off the... The short, the dark yeah, short, short girl. And, and she's kind of like, she gives you like a masculine vibe. Uh, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> song, I can't yeah. Remember. but she yeah. she also, you know, like fell off the radar. So I, um, when you look at it, when you think of female rappers, especially, you realize that most of them just, you know, fall by the wayside. So I won't say the, um, the music industry is not lucrative. I think there's a problem. Mm. Maybe there's a bias against, you know, women. female rappers or women generally. Yeah. Because when you look at women who were, I cannot even remember, like Among women who me. were like big in the days. And are they still, you know, as big currently? You can still talk of Mr. P. P Square has been since like yeah. forever. Two Face has also been in the game. The band has also been in the game. These people are still big mm. today. You realize that it's the female artists who are still, you know, a little bit by the wayside. Yeah. So is it that the music industry is not lucrative? or there is a bias against women in the music industry that, that stifles them, that makes them unable to, yeah. you know. I mean, they always say like it's a man's world and I don't think that's any different for the music industry. True. Um, it's interesting that she says that though, because it's one of those things, like it's like, it's like asking if the world is fair or something, because there's people who are rich and there's people who are not and they're well, all working. No, mm. no, not, not a lot of people are just sitting down, not doing anything, so. Yeah, you're right in the sense that uh, I think the music industry isn't very ac ac accepting of women. of women. Even the type of music that we like, anyway, is to is derogatory to women for the most part. Um, so it's hard for a woman to be able to do that in her own sense. But it, it, coming from somebody who didn't make it in the industry makes it a lot more biased. Suggesting maybe it didn't work out for you because yeah. that's what I'm seeing on Twitter. Like, since it doesn't work out for you, yeah. that um, Tima Savage is there, uh, Shay Shay. Mm, and <laughs> who else that that is not even as big that's making why you, even you know? don't even look at those people when you mention it to a savage or you mention it um um Yemi Alade, yeah. these people said like 10 years ago mm -hmm. give or take they started we're talking about sasha sasha was maybe 2004 2003 i'm talking yeah. about people do we have any female artists who can boast of 20 years actively being in the entertainment industry mm. and making money strictly from mu music or you know from being affiliated to um the music industry that is the question that we're asking that is Tiwa hard. savage and um yemi Alade are doing good for themselves and i would say that it's because the um, atmosphere is changing right people are becoming more accepting of um female artists and again another thing is sasha p wasn't really a vocalist she was a rapper the industry is not very accepting of female rappers. If it were... Globally, even. Come on. Yeah. Even globally. Yeah. You know, Nicki Minaj had to fight for yeah. a position. So the world isn't really accepted. And in Nigeria, it's even worse. We yeah. have very, very, very few female rappers. And even if they pop up and we're like, oh, these people have talent, they never really, they're never as big mm. as their male counterparts. So I personally, I would say maybe it's a bias. And I understand where Sasha P is coming from. For her, it's not lucrative. But to be honest, for some people... 
it is. It is lucrative. It, it is. And I think it's also based on, like, with ev almost everything in Nigeria, I think Nigeria is one of the places where I realize, like, you can't just have a career, you need to have a hustle as well. Yeah, true. And you have to be able to balance that out. Like, even in this industry, you find people who are not just strictly journalists. Like, mm. they're doing MC jobs or, like, <laughs> we have our go-to hustles that yeah. we use. Sometimes even music videos and things like that. I think maybe some, some people just don't know how to uh, add that hustle to yeah. the to the talent how to capitalize on that because you have to be able to push yourself out there and then do mm -hmm. like um endorsements and get all those things some people do the, those endorsements by themselves they hustle yeah, it true. behind the scenes and stuff but i wish we had um a, like somebody with more experience, experience within the in industry. The industry to shed more light on this because this is just our opinion yeah you might not know how it is wrong. maybe there is no bias you know against women in the industry but when you're an outsider and you're looking at the industry as a whole yeah. you feel like there is maybe yeah. a bias somewhere because yeah. even with the way um with the way artists women and female artists are treated you know that there's a difference right. in the way because some people will be like oh you can't compare this female artist who in her own right you yeah. think that oh this female artist is really big yeah and people are telling you you can't compare yeah. her to some male exactly artists. okay well so, but i think my wish might just actually be um put through so let me go on a break quickly and we'll be right back with the guest thank you Welcome to Tea Time on Plus TV Africa, where we bring you the biggest entertainment stories and, of course, analyze them for you. You can have both parents and still end up as a useless child. I see them every day. <laughs> Most times, I worry more about where I'm coming from mm -hmm. and where I am now, wow. and that determines my next step. Why are you sounding like an Alibaba? Alibaba. Oh, Plus TV Africa, we're feeling good. No time to die, everybody feeling all right. Still buy. Sometimes I look myself minimal are you. Mm. Apala music is for mature-minded people. That got DM sometimes from Malawi like. It seems like while a lot of things are going on a break or on a pause, discrimination in the US is still for growing strong. The No Problem rapper slams the law enforcement and Chicago Mayor Lori Lightfoot for allegedly targeting black neighborhoods in disciplining residents amid the coronavirus pandemic. More so than others, non-people non -people of color neighborhoods. So he's obviously here claiming that we're being over-policed, which is not mm. a news story, exactly. but um, I guess it's still thriving in the... Uh, poli police, uh, I mean, the coronavirus period. I think any excuse, we've seen that in many times, that any excuse to um, be racist is very, like, pe Americans don't think, I won't take this chance. Yeah. Like, they always take the chance. If it's about mm -hmm. getting into a bus or anywhere that there's authority over a, a black, a person of color, not even just a black person now, a person of color, you see that um, thriving. Chance the Rapper has always been one person that I know that articulates himself well in regards to fighting for the cause and everything. Um, it, it's, it's interesting, though, because this, this part, I mean, I'm always down for, like, black power and everything. But I wanted to ask you, like, do you think that black people are just a lot more, um, will I say disobedient or non-conforming? Or do you actually think that there is a over-policing problem? I think there's, a, there's an over-policing problem because... The funny thing about America is, for so long, America has presented itself as a powerhouse when it comes to, you know, when you watch movies and maybe there's an alien inv invasion, you see America is the superhero in the movie. But this pandemic, where you expect that Americans would take this pandemic seriously and maybe actually show some kind of leadership, they have really been disappointing yeah. a lot of people. In fact, it feels like there are more countries that are not um, countries that have people of color, they are the ones who are taking the pandemic more seriously than America. The reason why I'm saying this is because um, when you look at the events that have happened for the past few weeks, because I follow a lot of these, you know, um, activists, black activists on Twitter, and they keep on tweeting videos of white people protesting 
against the pandemic. And you see policemen, these people, I, I was looking at the protest and I was like, why is this protest so violent? You see these white people violently shouting at the policemen, I want to go out, I don't want to wear a mask. You know, they keep on shouting. And, and in fact, when you compare their protests to maybe like a Black Lives Matter protest, I feel like Black Lives Black Lives Matter um, protest is way calmer than yeah. this one. They were so, you know, in the policeman's face. Mm. And these policemen were very calm. You see these white people in their face shouting and, you know, being violent. Mm. And they were very, very calm. But if it were to be a... a black if, if those people were colored, mm. I am so sure that somebody would have left there in a day. Somebody would have left there dead. Yeah. So there is a problem. The fact yeah. that they're even sending um, um, militarized police to this neighborhood, yeah. it's problematic. I wish I could reply to this, but let's go back to our first story. Because remember, I said my my wish might have just come through mm -hmm. with our guest. So I think we've managed to be able to get him on board. Um, hello, Mr. Dayo. Are you with us? Yes, I'm, I'm here. How are you? Hi. Good morning. Good, Good morning. morning. Um, sorry about the issues there. We just want your thoughts on, we need your thoughts. This is not just a, a want. We need your thoughts on some opinions. So right now on social media, there is a lot of frenzy going on in regards to the music industry and business and the contracts and whatnot. But f we want to just really focus <laughs> on, on um, ta um, Sh Sasha P's task. She took to Twitter and said, that we cannot be lucrative in the in, in the industry and she asked us to discuss so we're going to do just that i mean you are an award-winning music producer you're a living legend in the industry so i mean why not we not have be able to have your your thoughts on that so what do you think um the, uh, the question again is what if you refresh my memory please okay so she's saying that um that it is hard to make money being in the music industry in nigeria we can break that down in so many ways we don't know if she's talking about if being a woman in the industry or just in general but what are your thoughts do you think let's say i want to go i want to change my well, hustle and i want to go into the music industry well, would you advise against that because um, there's no money no 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 i mean look the, the, the key thing the first thing you must understand or you must admit to yourself is why are you going into the music business are you there because you're following your passion mm. um you have a passion for songwriting for singing for rapping, for producing, you have to be honest with yourself first. Or are you going in for the fame? Or are you going in to make money? So once you understand why you are going into the game, whether it's the music or the entertainment or movies or whatever it is, entertainment is a big basket. But I beg to differ. There's a ton of money to be made in entertainment. Um, California, which is a state, has the fourth largest economy in the world. The fourth largest economy in the world. That is, its economy is bigger than most countries. A big percentage of that comes from entertainment, music, and movies. So Nigeria, we've been labeled as, I think, the third highest movie producing um, part, of in, in part of the world. Um, our music is everywhere. You just have to focus on where, which aspect you want to make money from. There's a ton of money, and any David will tell you, any whiskey will tell you, Don Jazzy will tell you, there's a ton of money to be made in But music. Mr. Dai, you didn't give us any female examples in that. Okay, let's yeah. just bring it to, because, you know, there's women on the table here, so we're shaking tables. Well, um, it, do you th think that why, this is different for I, women? That's why I, I asked. If you say female, there's Tiwa Savage there, there's Simi, there's YJ, there's numerous. Where then see, there's, there's so many that have come before. Queen Ayobalo, you can talk of Juju. There's so many. Okay, we, me we, we, mentioned, we mentioned before you came in that um, a lot of the times you might need another hustle. Do you think that that is true or is it solely based on music? You can feed your family, you can have a career that's well, long-lasting. Uh, well, my dear, I would any, any responsible person, any business person will tell you, from Warren Buffett to Mark Zuckerberg will tell you, don't put all your eggs in one basket. I mean, they taught us that in school. Even I, when I was in music, I, I was into real estate. I'm into farming as we speak. Hmm. I have a diversified portfolio. Any responsible human being will not depend on one sole um, source of income. It will be yeah. full hard. You must have at least three. If you're good enough, you, you should have five to six sources of income. Yeah. Are you with me? So, yeah, yeah. Um, but it's just, so you must have a fallback plan. You must have something to fall back on. If the music doesn't work out, Maybe your, yeah. the kind of music you're putting out is not, I mean, it might be accepted to some people, but it might not have that, uh, it might, they might not back it up with um, maybe supporting you by buying your CDs or coming to watch your shows. Yeah. 
But you cannot now label and say the whole industry, the whole music industry is not profitable. You can't make money from it. There are people who are doing well with it. Tiwa Savage is an example. Mama Umi has been in business almost over 10 years now. Mm. Are you with me? Yes. And there are countless, numerous other artists that are doing well. Okay. I'm, I'm just limiting it to Nigeria now. Right, right. Well, the let's, examples let's do that. are there. Yes, some of some have blazed the path. I mean, maybe the ones that came before didn't have that chance to make that amount of money. But that's always the case. The amount of money being made by the artists today, we didn't make that when we when we first came into the business. And I, I always make this example when we came in. Ella Nicola Kokuti was the highest paid musician at that time. Ella was making a little over 200,000 per show. But we changed that. We upped it with two faced And look at it today some artists charge 20, 30, yeah. 40 million. Okay, per okay. Show. Just, just to break you in, you mentioned before now, and I, I want to focus on that a little bit. If the person isn't making money in the industry, what is what do you think is the result of that? And this person has talents, so they are listening to their music. They have the fame. What else could be a problem in regards to why people are not cashing out in this lucrative industry, as you've mentioned? It could be it could be a, a number of things. Look, there, there has to be what you call division of labor. You can be the best singer, but not be the best marketer. In right. this our part of the world, the division of labor is not clearly spelled out. The artist is the songwriter who writes and songs themselves will probably produce half his album by himself, will want to shoot his video himself, okay. want to go and meet with clients and stuff, will be his own manager or have his sister or his mother as manager. So there's no clear division of labor. If you have the proper management, the proper person managing, producing you, going to sell your works, and you have the talent, you concentrate on your talent. If you're a songwriter, concentrate on writing good songs. If you're a singer, concentrate on that craft. Harness that craft and leave the rest. Hire proper people. Hire in the, uh, a lawyer to look at look out for your mm. contract. Hire a good marketer, a good yeah. manager to get the best uh, jobs for you out there. If you are not succeeding with all that, then make, you might need to come back and retrace your steps and revamp. Okay. Maybe the kind of music you're, you're you're projecting out there is not what the people want to hear. Right. So that's why you must always have something to fall back on. Yeah, so focus on your niche and be professional at like that. Thank you so much, Mr. Dio, for the time and joining us in the studio live today. Thank you. Thank you very We're much for go having any, me. Thank you. We're going to go on a very quick break. We'll right. be right back. Do stay tuned. Welcome to Tea Time on Plus TV Africa, where we bring you the biggest entertainment stories and, of course, analyze them for you. You can have both parents and still end up as a useless child at the scene every day. <laughs> <laughs> Most times, I worry more about where I'm coming from mm -hmm. and where I am now, wow. and that determines my next step. Why are you sounding like an Alibaba? Alibaba. Now? <laughs> <laughs> Plus TV Africa, we're feeling good. No time to do everybody feeling all right. Minimal are you? Mm. Mm. music is for mature minded people. I got DM sometimes from Malawi, like, Sleeping early. Sleeping early. Welcome back. Nigerian women are always pulling Tiwa Savage down. She's one of the few African women who put the continent on the map, but the disrespect she's receiving from these women is disgusting. This is a Twitter user. Then Tiwa now responded to this, saying, It has always been like that. I doubt it would ever change. Maybe I for just JJ Day Yankee, they sing my R&B because I see how hard the Rihanna Navy beehives um, protect their own. Joining me this morning to trash this out is a feminist and corporate executive producer, Ireti Bakari. Hello, Ireti. Good morning. Hello. Good morning. How are you? I'm well. Good morning. So, to, I mean, this topic is shaking a lot of tables and we have to be able to put the female perspective into this because they're kind of shaming her music and, and, um, and she's saying that that's something that has always been like that. Do you think this is a Tiwa Savage problem or it's a female... Um, it, women in the industry problem is that what do you think? I, I think when we talk about these things, we need to talk about it in context. Um, so if you're talking in context of the tweet that was posted, is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Right. So here's one thing that that tweet was totally offensive. 
it was rude, it was totally unnecessary. Yeah. Okay. So that's the one thing we need to agree and put, you know, just put aside. Now, with regards to the whole women always putting me down, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, look, lots of Nigerian women, and especially young women, not to imply that two after all is 40, so she can't be called young in that sense. But she also, I believe, is still finding her way through. Okay, every day we all learn, every day our woman womanhood becomes. Now, when men put each other down, okay, nobody says it's man putting man down, mm. right? It's just a case of you're rude, you have no right to say that, mm. yada, yada, yada. But when it's another woman criticizing another woman, and she's done it in the most offensive way, it suddenly becomes women against women. Mm. No, women are not monolithic. All right. right. I can right. dislike what you do and still support you. Yeah. The same way yeah. men have man code, women have women code. Of course. Now, it's the women code that matters because not all women are going to like each other. That's a fact. That's fair. Not all men like each other. True. But trust me, men will still keep the man code. Yeah. Okay. They will still cover their mates back. They will still favor each other first, etc., etc. Right. So I think that's what's important. Yeah. If Tiwa feels she's doing, and, and look, we must all go where we're celebrating, mm. not where we're tolerating. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah. If she feels that she's more celebrated in the US, then she should go there. I think she has every right to go there. <laughs> every human being, nobody needs to have to face constant abuse all the time. Yeah. And if she feels that the people in Nigeria or, or a lot of her female fans in Nigeria don't connect with her, mm -hmm. then she should go where she's connected. Yeah. I happen um, to like her music. I don't necessarily subscribe to her politics on women. Yeah. That's a different story altogether. Yes, yeah. Of course. But that doesn't mean I can't respect her craft. Yeah. And I can't respect I mean, uh, yeah. Yemi Alade has done that. We've seen how she doesn't really have that much of a fan, a strong fan base in Nigeria. But she is Mama Africa, and that's continental. Yeah. But Yemi, um, yeah. Yemi, you have so a question. What I wanted to say was, um, when I read it to a savage tweet, the problem I had with what she said was specifically saying Nigerian women have mm. a thing against her. Because when you look at it collectively, it's not just Nigerian women who have called... Uh, who have insulted her music, yes. or who have spoken negatively about yeah. her. And she's comparing herself to Rihanna, Beyonce. These women have also been slut-shamed. Yes. These women have also Absolutely. been attacked in different ways. Mm. So um, this is not the first time that Tiwa Savage is doing something like this. So mm. I have a problem with the fact that it feels like she's always um, creating this scenario where Nigerian like women are the enemy. Right. So uh, that's my problem with whenever you know Tiwa Savage comes out or whenever you know, this kind mm -hmm. of issue comes up, it feels like Tiwa Savage is always blaming Nigerian women and saying Nigerian women are against her. When I've seen a lot of Nigerian women actually stand up for her yeah. when men her. insult yes. her. So, so, so that's just my yes. problem. Do you think you agree? Do you agree to that trail of thought, Iriti? Do you think that this is kind of like well, a pity party I, going I on? I do, I do. I don't know the name of the lady speaking, but certainly I give her a round of applause. I totally agree with her. And even more so, if you look at that tweet, a lot of women came to her defense. Right. A lot of women came to her defense, okay? Mm -hmm. So to constantly say Nigerian women, Nigerian women, and comparing herself to Beyonce. Beyonce is constantly criticized, okay? Heavily. Beyonce ignores it and moves on. Waits for the next big interview or article, and she might choose to address it. She might choose not to. Mm -hmm. And I think that's possibly where Tiwa needs to get to. Tiwa yeah, needs true. to get to that point where she doesn't have to respond to everything, everything. Yeah. okay? Somebody mm -hmm. stupid, clearly very stupid, has written a very stupid tweet, has insulted her. Ignore it, keep it yeah. moving. Yeah. Focus on what you're doing yeah. and continue to live your life. Exactly. How many is she going to respond to? And if she keeps grouping Nigerian women mm. into this negative bracket, yeah. she's going to keep losing yeah. Nigerian women. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. That's exactly. not the short of it. Thank you so much, Iriti, for being on the show today with us. I think it's made this conversation a lot yeah. clearer. So I appreciate your time here. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye. Bye. And that is how we wrap up this episode of Tea Time. Thank you for watching. Do join the conversation on our social media with the hashtag Tea Time or tweet at us at Plus TV Africa. Remember, you can catch up on this episode and all our exclusive content by subscribing to our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa. You can also catch Tea Time on Arta TV and in London on Ben Television. Once again, I say thank you to Nimi for joining me today. Um, and see you next time.